Hello, my name is Homer Knox, and I'm at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. I'm with Men Teaching Men, and we're going to be teaching tonight on physical healing. Very interesting subject in the scripture, and I'm thankful to be with these mighty men here. Healing. There's many great ministries that have all kinds of wonderful stuff on healing. Just wonderful. And there's a guy up in Tampa, Billy Burke, evangelist. He has great stuff. There's a guy up in uh, Leesburg, Florida. His name is Gary Greer, Pastor Greer. I think he's a bishop now. Just wonderful teaching on healing. So I'm just going to give you a little short thing here. But there's other stuff more in depth uh, than what I have. And uh, first question we have is why are we teaching this subject? Why are we going to go, why are we going to do this? Well, it's, part of it is because it's church doctrine. It's our church throne of grace doctrine. Okay. Now, who knows what doctrine means? What's the definition of doctrine? Teachings. Doctrine is teaching. That's right. That's right. Doctrine means teaching. The meaning of doctrine. Doctrine is a belief or set of beliefs held and taught. Hosea, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's important to know God's word, and it's important to go know God's words for healing. Why? Because we get sick sometimes, don't we? We get sick. And some of us get sick and die. It's important for us to know about healing. The next question we have is, do we all believe in healing? Do all the churches believe? We're in unity on this. No. We're not in a unit. There's lots of churches out there that don't believe in healing. They just don't believe it. They're good churches, they're bible believing churches, but they don't believe in healing. Some churches think that healing died with the apostles. When the apostles left, where they were all killed, when they were killed, it ended. Um, and it's a current issue because, again, we get sick. Our church, Throne of Grace, believes in healing. I believe in healing. So if I have an opportunity to teach, I'm going to teach healing. That's what, that's what I'm going to do tonight. And when you talk about healing, you want to remember that God is sovereign. He decides. He decides when to heal and when not to heal. He's the decider. And there's a time to die, isn't there? There's a time to go. Uh, you go because you have old age. Go because you have a sickness. Some people go because they've done what God's asked them to do in their life, and it's time to move on. And we see that in 2 Timothy 4, 7. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 6 to 7. The Apostle Paul talking. And the time of my departure has come, and I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Time for Paul to go, and he knows it. Okay, and he goes. You know, God has a plan for us. John, the 11th chapter, the fourth verse. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. God has a plan for our life, and unfortunately, sometimes sickness is involved in that. Lazarus dies, as we know. He's put in the grave, in the tomb, and Jesus calls him out. Calls him out of death. I always like to look up the meaning of words we're studying. Healing. Healing's like an action verb, isn't it? It's not stoic, it's action. It's going to be healed. It's going to be raised. And uh, what does it mean? It means to cure, to make whole, to repair, to make well again, to make sound or whole. Healing. The meaning of healing. To cure, to make whole, to repair, to make well again, to make sound or whole. Healing. Once saved, we begin to receive spiritual healing in our life. Don't we? It takes time. You grow in that. But you get spiritual healings in, the th in your life. Spiritual healing, the things that have happened in your life. It's first in the Bible in Numbers 12, 13. And Moses crying to the Lord. Now that was about 1500 B.C. And so the question is, what happened from 1500 B.C. to before? What happened? From Adam. What happened? Okay, 1500. And then from Moses to Adam. It doesn't mention. It doesn't mention. Numbers, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse. Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, O God, heal her, I pray. And Moses cried unto the Lord in Numbers 12, 13, saying, Heal her. He's talking about Miriam, I beseech thee. Uh, God uh, gave Miriam leprosy. She was a leper. And the reason is she, she criticized Moses. And God says, you know... Not nice. She was with her brother Aaron. 
Aaron didn't get leprosy, but Miriam did. And the reason is Aaron was the first priest of the temple. And the scripture says you can't have a leper serving in the temple. And so that's why God didn't afflict um, his brother, just inflicted Miriam. And God heals Miriam. Now we want to talk about why we are healed. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the 5th verse. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. And with Jesus' stripes, and I've had Jesus' there, we are healed. We have the right to divine healing as a Christian. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's say that out loud. We have a right to divine healing through his blood, through his blood. We have a right to divine healing through Jesus' blood. Jesus was given 39 stripes. There are 39 major diseases in the body. And you can give up the 40, but he was only given 39 because they never wanted to make a mistake by giving him too many because that was in violation of Scripture. Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter, the third verse. He may be given 40 blows, not more. For if more are given, your brother may be shamed before you. And so he's only given 39. Now let's talk about how healing is accomplished. Psalm, the 107th chapter, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word, he spoke it, and he healed them and delivered them out of their destruction. Our God in the New Testament and our God in the Old Testament is a healing God. It's part of his nature to heal. Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 1. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Part of his nature. Jesus, or he ordained the 12 apostles and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And so we're given that power. The apostles were given that power. Because I don't care what you have or what you get, God has the ability to heal that. He has the ability to heal that. Let's talk about the gift of healing. <clears throat> A little bit different. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse. To another, faith by the same Spirit and to another gifts of healing by the one spirit. There's a gift of healing. There's a gift of healing. Uh, and I'm not sure I have it or not, but uh, the guys that have it lay hands on people and they get well. They get healed. Catherine, Catherine Coleman, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. In. There's a woman out of Christian retreat. She's a babushful woman. If I say babushful woman, you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. It's a, like a Slavic woman, yeah. and she dressed Slavic, and she has this head covering here. She's a babushka woman, okay? And she was at a Christian retreat, very interesting. But she gave her testimony. She says, I was in the hospital just crying out to God, heal me, heal me. And what did God say? Eat broccoli. <laughs> Two words, eat broccoli. Wow. And she ate broccoli, and she got out. Wow. We want to pigeonhole healing, lay hands, go up to the <laughs> elders. God, God does it what he wants. <coughs> Eat broccoli. So interesting. Mark, the 16th chapter, the 18th verse. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Faith is involved in healing, isn't it? Faith is involved. Yes. Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 8th verse. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. They can be healed anyway. You know, are you a believer? Well, if you're not, I can't pray for you. No, no, that isn't the way it works. Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 10th verse. Now, when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. He marveled. Centurion said, just say the word. That faith thing's coming out. Just say the word. He marveled. He marveled is only used twice in the New Testament with Jesus. The first one here, and the second one is a, is a period of unbelief. He couldn't believe that they didn't believe in him. Twice. And so this Centurion guy is real special. And we're going to talk about belief now. Matthew, the 8th chapter, 
the 13th verse. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very moment. Go your way, and as thou hast believed, believed, it shall be done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that hour. Praise God. Praise God. Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 35th verse. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And healing what? Every, every sickness, every disease among the people. Jesus healed it all. Let's talk about crying out to Jesus. Psalm, the 30th chapter, the second verse. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. When you get real sick, you'll start crying out to God. You know, you'll get real sick. You'll cry out. You'll cry out. You'll cry out at night. You'll cry out during the day. You'll cry out. You'll cry out. Luke, the fourth chapter, the 40th verse. While the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, Jesus, and laying his hands on each one of them, he was healing them. And what does it say? And healed them. Praise God and healed them. James, the fifth chapter, the fourteenth verse. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. James, the fifth chapter, the fifteenth verse. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. This is a wonderful verse, and, and you need to make note of this. Here's the deal. When it's sick, it says, call for the elders of the church. Call for the elders of the church, and let them pray for you. And that's, this is what's happened. And the prayer of faith. Now, why do we do it in the church? I've had one of my pastors said to me, wonderful man of God, wonderful man of God, but he didn't believe in healing. He said, why do I have to do it in the church? Why do you think he has to do it in the church? There's power there, right? There's the spirit there. There's the anointing there. And so the elders come and pray for you. They're the men of faith, aren't they? They're the men. That's why they're elders. Okay? And then they get healed, and then what? It's a great testimony, isn't it, to the power of Jesus. All the people that don't believe are there say, man, I saw him get healed. We see healings over here at church, don't we? We see healings. Yeah. And so that, that's a great witness. Great witness. When I pray for somebody, and I pray for a lot of people, you tell me you're sick, I normally will pray for you. I don't ask how they're doing. I pray for your heart disease. How are you? Hear that heart pumping or anything? You know, your eyes aren't seeing good. How's your eyes? Look out there. I don't do that. Not sure it's my business. And so I don't do that. Gerald Durstein taught me that. Let's talk about why not healed. Why not healed? Well, we, we mentioned faith before. That might be a hindering block if you don't have faith. It might be a hindering block. We talked about God's plan. It might not be His plan for you to be healed at that time. And there's lots of examples in the Scripture. Paul was like that. Paul prayed for healing and God said no. There's sometimes, probably a lot of times, unknown reasons that God's not going to share with us. And the final reason is, I don't know. I don't know why they're not healed. Don't have the foggiest idea. I uh, started a back pain. It was in my early 40s. And I, I got bad, and then I went to Hershey Medical Center's big teaching hospital in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And they uh, said, look, your backbone goes in instead of out. And what it's doing, it's cutting all those nerves in your back. And so what I would do is get terrific pain down my legs. I'd get a pressure in my back. Um, I carried a ba bottle of aspirin right up here, and when I got too bad, I'd start pumping these aspirin in. And uh, I went to Cypress Gardens, if any of you have been around with Cypress Gardens this year. And about, oh, every now and then I'd have to lay down on the grass to get my back no pain. It would relieve the pressure. I could do one aisle of the grocery store. I'd do one aisle and I'd say, Bonnie, I gotta go. And I'd get back and sit in the car until all that passed. Wow. And so I went to a, a, a chiropractor, Jack, in Campbell, Pennsylvania, just a wonderful man of God, Christian guy. And he said, he got the scans and he's looking. He said, Homer, let me tell you two things. First of all, I can't help you. You know, I just can't help you. The second thing he said to me was, if you let them operate on you, you're going to be in a wheelchair. I said, oh man, I had young kids. And so I said, I'll just keep taking aspirin and suffer. And that's what I did. And so finally, it's like the light goes on. Kaboom! You haven't been prayed for. 
you haven't been prayed for. So we went to a little brother in the Christ church, Pastor Cy Layman was the pastor, and I asked him, and I asked, they had one elder there, Charles Malhorn, I asked Brother Charles if they would pray for me. And they called me up, they prayed for me, I went up in pain, and went back in pain. Then about a year later, one year later, I'm sitting in the church saying, my, my back doesn't hurt anymore. That's how long it took one year for God to heal me. Now every now and two things happen with that. One, uh, three things. One, man, I'm better. You know, I couldn't do squat. I couldn't do squat, so I'm really better. The second thing is that I get to witness with people with back problems. You know, you can tell back people that the problems, you can just tell. They got a cane, they got a wheelchair, you know, and I can tell them what God's done for me. The third thing I've realized is when I forget and don't give him praise for that every now and then, I start getting little tingles. Does that make sense? I get this little little tingle here and I realize I really haven't been praising God enough for this. But when I'm sick and go to the doctors, I always go up. If I have anything major that they're going to do to me, I always go up and see Pastor Stan. I call him first and say, I want you to pray and anoint for me so it's not a surprise. And when I go up, I tell him. He's got a lot of things going on and for him to remember what I asked for, I tell him, I say, this is what I want you to pray for me for. I was up two or three months ago four months ago, whenever it was, I have this arthritis thing in my head, which is going to be a problem if God doesn't touch me. And so, uh, bang, he prayed for it right away. It's been better. I'm not sure it's gone. I'm not sure completely healing. But a lot of the symptoms have dissipated. And so I, I'm thankful for God for that. I'm thankful. Do you believe my testimony when I say that? Do you believe yeah. I was healed? Yeah, absolutely. Do you need a witness? See, no. Give, there's there. a witness right over there. <laughs> Let me talk about working the Word. At the bottom of your sheet, at the end of the page, there are several healing scriptures. I normally read those every day. Okay, now I have them written out. I didn't write them out for you, you gentlemen. You can look them up. It's good for you. Look them up. But I read through those every day about being healed. There was a king by the name of Asa. He's in Old Testament, and he didn't seek God. He sought the physicians first, and God was very critical with him. And I think he died in his disease because of that. So I'm always careful to always careful to go through the church first. But what you do with those scriptures, you do what they call work the word, work the word. And what you're doing, you're just reading back to God what He said. By your stripes I am healed. You just reeled that back to Him. You know, God has a commitment. Now there are a lot of factors here to heal you, doesn't He? He's promised he would. Now, again, there's other factors. He has reasons and all that. But on all big problems in life, you work that word. You find out the scripture that you deal with that problem. And then you start reading that back to God. You start reading, God, this is what you said. Man, you said you healed me. You said you healed everyone. There's a couple scriptures. There's a whole bunch of healing scriptures. But I just gave you a couple to work with. Uh, let me tell you what helps. If you're sick and you need a healing, stop sinning. Stop doing it. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Whatever you're doing, stopping. Healing's available. Be prayed for. Be prayed for. To continue in sin after you've been prayed for. We had a guy here die of lung cancer. Great guy. Great guy. They prayed for him. Pastor Sand said, I just sense he's going to get a healing. The next day I was up here and he's in the back here smoking away. I thought, wait a minute. This might be a mistake. I told Bonnie, this is the end for this guy. And it was. He died. Okay, so if you're doing things that are in sin, stop it. Stop it. The other thing you can do, work the word, you can thank God ahead of time. Jesus, thank you. Speak the word. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you. Thank you for touching me. Colossians, the third chapter, the 15th verse. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Be thankful. When you're sick, be thankful. Thank God for what he's going to do. Rest in that. Rest in that. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Just thank God that He's going to heal you. And, you know, we're all concerned. You know, sickness is with you all the time. You never forget it. There it is. My back hurt me all the time. But rest in that and ask God to give you His peace on this. Ask God to give you peace. Helpful hint for healing. Number one, obey James 5 and be prayed for. Number two, stop sinning. Number three, Work the word. Number four, be thankful. Number five, rest in God. Number six, ask Jesus for peace. All right, this is power packed here, gentlemen, all these scriptures. And so I trust that you will use them. I trust if you're sick that you will facilitate what God has for you. I don't want to be sick. I know I'll have to die, but I want to live as full a life as I can. All right?
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. Thank you. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and are you saved? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day after burial. And he's ascended into heaven according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. No one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. And thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time from your heart, you're now born again. You're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now back in the fold. You're part of the kingdom. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.